am Lisa Cumming, and I teach chemistry in a suburb of Cleveland. This is uh, my 34th year teaching, and I have been using Wacom tools for uh, going on two years now. Um, I have used uh, Wacom tools in a variety of different ways. I have created uh, podcasts for my students to watch. Um, they watch them as previews or they watch them for reinforcement. I have um, worked with students one-on-one -on -one, um, in a Google Meet or Zoom. Uh, I have also uh, annotated PowerPoint slides with my uh, Wacom Intuos uh, to teach teachers in a workshop. And uh, one really cool thing that I've done is I've Bluetoothed the Wacom and then I am able to walk around my classroom and kind of monitor what's going on with students while I'm actually writing on the board. So that's been kind of cool. Um, Wacom tools have really helped me this year. It's been kind of a game changer because our schedule is constantly changing. So every day you don't know what the schedule is going to be like. So the fact that I have something so flexible to use uh, every day has been really great. And uh, it's also helpful too, because with chemistry, you're working with symbols as in math too. And so it's really nice to be able to write those symbols down, um, you know, when you're working with kids rather than having to search for them in some kind of a program. I also like the authenticity myself of my own handwriting um, while I'm working with students. So these, these welcome tools have definitely been helpful for me this year. And I'm here to give you a little tutorial on Limnu and perhaps give you some ways to use it in your classroom. So I am a chemistry teacher and so when I looked at this uh, application. I looked for areas within my own curriculum where I feel like my delivery could be improved or an area where the students were struggling and perhaps this application would help. And so I would suggest you do the same with any software piece or application. So this Limnu happens to be a whiteboard and it's a whiteboard that is shareable. It has many functionalities. You can write on it, you can import documents, uh, you can use sticky notes, and you're going to see a few of those things in some of the documents, the things, the boards actually that I've created in here. So one of the very first things we're going to look at here is a brainstorming activity that I have done with my students. So we do a lot of labs in chemistry, and many of the labs I do not give the students procedures for and they are asked to create their own procedure. They get the procedure approved and then they carry out the lab. Well, when I started looking at Limnu, I thought, oh, okay, so this is perfect. We can have the groups brainstorm a procedure. So what I would do is create a board for each group. You can easily copy the boards. And then I would have each group of three to four students um, brainstorm a procedure. And so the board that I would do would look like this. And again, you can make copies for each group of students. Notice at the top it says determination of the empirical formula of a hydrate procedure brainstorm. And then I have a sticky note that I've created here. And then the students can type right in the sticky note. So they would then, as a group, all the students in the group collaboratively add to this sticky note um, and, and make corrections and suggestions and such and they would all have access and be able to do this. So that's one possible application, brainstorming activity. And for me in particular, it's brainstorming a procedure. So how else might you use Limnu? So I'm going back to that main page we were just on. And by the way, this is where, of course, all your boards would be listed, right? So I came upon something called sketch noting, which I thought was kind of interesting. And I think in, again, in chemistry, this is a great way to illustrate topics. Uh, I have a lot of visual learners. So I think anything visual, right? Any picture diagram for them makes the subject or topic easier. So this is a sketch note that I created for a portion of it at least, for endo versus exothermic reactions. And notice in my sketch note I have 
a picture that I've created on the left hand side of what it would look like in the lab doesn't have to be fancy right and then on the right side I have a graph of what happens over the course of the reaction and then I have a brief little description so I just basically started this sketch note you would then add probably more explanation maybe steps in how the, the lab would um, would go um, and then I would add the exothermic piece to this too. So I would use this a variety of different ways, I think. I could create the sketch notes for myself, by myself, and then share them with the students, right, to help them. Or, again, put the students into groups and have them create their own sketch note as a group collaboratively. So again, sketch notes, nothing more than like you have explanation in there, you have a graph in there, and then you have like a diagram. So sketch notes, I thought this was great. So how else could we use Limnu? And by the way, in the sketch note, um, you could have the students use uh, like a tablet. I used my Wacom for this, and at the bottom of Limnu, you have all different colors of pens, so you can really um, you know, emphasize different parts of the diagram. So, or the students again could use um, sticky notes and or images that they import. So it's great if you have the tablet, but there are ways around it if you don't. Okay, so how else could we use Limnu? So brainstorming, sketch noting, um, you could also use this as an end of unit review. So let me go to my end of unit one questions. I have students usually at the end of a unit, they'll come up with a multitude of questions that they just want me to answer um, in front of the class. So I decided um, I would try to use Limnu in that um, situation. And so I would create a board. Um, and again, you can copy each board. This particular board has the blackboard actually as the background rather than the whiteboard. Um, you would have the students in a group again of three to four, and each student would have their own sticky note, and they would list all the questions, all the things that they're unsure of in the unit. And then within the group, the students could then answer each other's questions, right? And you can make these sticky notes obviously larger. So then I think once the students have worked in the groups for a while, I would bring everybody back and then I would want to review the answers to all the questions to make sure that the content was correct. So if student A answered student B's questions, I'd want to take a quick peek at those answers. And then any questions that remain unanswered, so maybe those more challenging ones, bring the group back together and as a class, we would look at those questions and try to get those questions answered. I would probably do this maybe a couple days prior to a to an actual unit test, right? So we would have time to um, go through the questions and then also maybe some practice problems if, if there was time available or possibly um, some, some in-class review. But this would be a great, one of the great steps, I think, in a uh, unit review. So how else might you use Limnu? I actually did a couple activities where I connected a couple different applications. And so one of them was uh, chemical nomenclature. I actually created a flow chart in, um, in CollabWord, and the students had to kind of uh, take all the information about naming compounds and put it into a flow chart concept map kind of format. And then this particular board would be an extension of that activity. So the students would create their flow chart with the different kinds of compounds. And then they would come to Limnu, and there are four different types of compounds actually. And the students would come to Limnu, and then they would have as a group a sticky note for each type of compound. And then samples, examples of how you name a compound. So they would have a chemical formula and then the name and then another chemical formula and the name and they would have this for each set of four different compounds. So I have one sticky note up here. It says ionic compound examples and so on that sticky note the students would put a chemical formula and then a name and I would probably ask for four to five examples for each of the different types of compounds and then in the middle there you're going to see the directions to the students. And again this activity was connected to 
a collab board activity. So kind of like a part two. I did the same thing with a kinetics activity for my AP students. Um, I would have them create a, um, I would have them create a, a flow chart of the different types of orders of reactions. And then I put one of the sticky notes up here for you to see. The students would then create a sticky note for each order of reaction. And there's zero order, first order, and second order. And then in each one of those sticky notes, they would have data that would lead them to the idea that that reaction was first order. Um, and so they could do that a variety of different ways. They could upload an image. They could actually do it without a sticky note and simply write right on the board um, the data. So um, this is one way of doing it, um, and that is through the use, again, of the sticky notes. So and then the last uh, flow chart, I think I have one more here that I created. Uh, the last flow chart that I created was properties of solids. And I did this again in collab board, the actual flow chart. And I think I would have the students actually create the flow chart within some parameters. And then this would be like a part two again. The students would come to the Limni board and they would actually uh, list properties of each of the four different types of compounds that they came up with um, descriptions and diagrams of. So I did the first one here, metallic properties. It says that they're shiny, that they're ductile, and that they conduct heat and electrical current. So I listed three properties here, and then of course the students would continue on and, and list list a bunch of properties under each one of these. Again, collaboratively, right, as a group of three to four students. So how else could you use uh, Limnu? Well, uh, it's also kind of nice because you can import uh, documents into Limnu. And so I imported this Microsoft Word document uh, about Hess's law. And as you can see, I already had some uh, annotations in here. But you can uh, go through and you can write on the document you can show what you're doing to the students. And with Hess's Law, which is kind of a lengthier topic in chemistry, it's nice to be able to have all of these equations written out and then to be able to go in and actually write right on the document. So that's what I'm doing here. You can import a Microsoft Word document. You can import a PDF. A lot of the whiteboard applications, you can only import a PDF. So I kind of like this because I still use a lot of Word documents. So it's nice to be able to um, import them and then be able to annotate on them. And then as you could see, the annotations were actually saved from my previous um, my previous annotations. So annotating on documents, I think, is a real important feature, being able to do that of Limnu. So what else can you use Limnu for? Well, I have some other ideas that I hope to use in the future. One of those ideas is when a student gets to a topic that's really tough and it's tough for the whole group. Um, I'm thinking of having the students do a poster session on that topic. So on one of the boards, they would actually create, however they chose to, a board that clearly and completely illustrates that topic. So they could have diagrams, they could have graphs, they could have text, they could use their tablets to write directly on there, or they could create text boxes right, right on the Limni board. And again, do that collaboratively in a group of three to four. I think summarizing main points of a lesson or a unit, I think that idea is important. That could be done as a class, so I could share my board and as we're summarizing, the students can be putting in their main points. I think this is important, this collaboration, this sharing, because many of us are in now this year hybrid or remote situations. We're not necessarily within the classroom. So summary, summarizing, excuse me, the main points of a lesson or a unit here would be a good, good thing to do on Limnu. You could also provide homework or lab instructions in a Limnu. The nice thing about this whiteboard is you could write everything on it and then you can save it, right? So you could save directions, you could save 
instructions for a lab or pre-lab instructions um, can be saved here. If you have a student that's absent and your lesson was done in LimNu, you can save those notes, right, and make those notes available to that student that was absent. We could also put a problem up on a board and share that problem with the whole class, um, share it with groups within the class, and then collaboratively the students can add to that board. So again, you could do it a whole class or you could do it again in groups of three to four and have the students add their own steps in there. Uh, you could switch the teacher and student role. So you could have the um, student become the teacher and they're writing on the whiteboard and they're instructing the class or they're going over an example, right, of a particular problem. I think that's important to have the students actively involved, right? So LimNu has so many uses, things that I have yet to even discover, I think. Um, it is collaborative, so again, in a hybrid, remote, in-person, any of those situations, this would work really well. Um, there's a very small learning curve, so I learned LimNu just in, a, in an hour of just kind of playing around with it. And then again, I looked for gaps in my curriculum, right? And I tried to think of things that would fit into those gaps. The free version has a lot to offer. The pro version gives you a little bit more um, options there. Um, and you can easily use your Wacom device with this. So I pretty much used it for everything, um, all the writing for sure, and even some of the navigation as well. So again, look for gaps in your curriculum and see if this particular application is going to help you out in any way, right? So thank you for listening.